acute leukemias so in this particular topic let me condense it very much it is mainly the aml and all what i am going to deal in detail right so it is acute myeloblastic leukemia and acute lymphoblastic leukemia so how we differentiate aml from all it's mainly based on the morphological appearance of this blast so the criteria to diagnose aml or all is presence of the blast more than 20% so once you do the peripheral smear differential count so if you see more than 20% circulating uh, cells as a blast so it is a, a case of acute leukemia so if you see myeloblast it is aml if you see lymphoblast more than 20% it is a all it is as simple as that so how to differentiate myeloblast from the lymphoblast so diagrammatically i have written here so size wise almost both are same little bit myeloblast may be more and you see the nucleus it is having open chromatin so chromatin threads are not tightly packed they are open chromatin we call it as sieved appearance of the chromatin and we can see prominently around 2 to 5 nuclei the cytoplasm is about moderate amount and you see cytoplasmic granules sometimes these granules can fuse and forms the R rods we call it as R rods so that R rods if you see it is a case of AML definite that it is a AML and lymphoblast almost of same size so nucleus is so huge and very scant amount of cytoplasm no granules in the cytoplasm nucleus shows very condensed chromatin very tightly packed chromatin so that you cannot make out any nucleoli by most you can make out single nucleoli in the lymphoblast so this is how we differentiate the myeloblast from the lymphoblast but it is not so easy always sometimes both may appear same so we have the cytochemistry stains myeloperoxidase is a stain for the myeloblast and this is the one which is commonly used whereas sudan black also will be positive for the myeloblast whereas these myeloblast will be negative for the PAS periodic acid shift stain so PAS will be positive for the lymphoblast we call it as block positivity the cytoplasm will show nice block positivity for the PAS the lymphoblast will show block positivity for the PAS so what I am going to tell is the 8 types the FAB classification which is there even in the WHO classification M0 to M7 and three types of ALL, L1, L2 and L3 so remember acute leukemias are the ones which are having highly aggressive course patient will end up life within no time so the mortality rate is very very high so you have to diagnose these cases as early as possible otherwise very high mortality rate will be there so predominant cell that will be there in the peripheral blood is the blast 20% you should see either in the peripheral smear sometimes you have to do even bone marrow examination for confirmation most of the time it is a cytochemistry and even immunophenotyping that helps us for the proper and final confirmation of the cases so let us have a look on these acute leukemias so this is diagrammatical representation of the myeloblast and the lymphoblast hope you understood so look for the amount of uh, granules uh, cytoplasmic granules and the the structure of uh, nucleus as such is it having open chromatin or a tightly packed chromatin and look for the nucleoli most important again R rod you have to see for the myeloblast so L1, L2, L3 three types of AL acute lymphoblastic leukemia this is how the lymphoblast will appear see here the nucleus is so large right we call it as naked nucleus because there is very very scant amount of cytoplasm so very scant Some amount, sometimes the nucleus may show indentation so kidney shaped nuclear, nucleus so occasionally nucleoli may be seen these are pale stained areas nucleoli so but no granules no granules in the cytoplasm as such amount of cytoplasm is very very scant and in the background you see thrombocytopenia so this is a platelet but severe thrombocytopenia will be there for all acute leukemias L1 very classical type again the classical blast with a thrombocytopenia right L2 is the one which mimics like that of a AML see here 
the amount of cytoplasm is little bit larger so moderate amount of cytoplasm and when you see this uh, particular case you may even confuse it for the myeloblast so this is one which is really challenging for the pathologist so we invariably take the help of the immunohistochemistry chemistry markers cytochemistry markers for differentiating ALL L2 from the AML very classical about uh, ALL L3 is the presence of the cytoplasmic vacuoles so this is very classical appearance of the ALL L3 remember leukemia can become lymphoma that's what I told in the previous introduction class so ALL L3 is nothing but Burkitt's lymphoma that means patient can also present with a mass presentation for example patient can have a gum hypertrophy gum presentation that is mandibular enlargement or sometimes patient can have a intestinal mass so let us see about Burkitt's lymphoma in detail later on in the chapter of uh, NHL so remember at this particular point lymphomas can become leukemia leukemia can become lymphoma so ALL L3 is nothing but Burkitt's lymphoma so this is the uh, appearance of ALL L3 Burkitt's lymphoma when it involves the tissues mainly lymph nodes it gives a peculiar appearance of the uh, section of the lymph nodes like this we call it a starry sky appearance so what are stars these are the macrophages the macrophages scattered in between the blue background of the lymphoma cells so this is a lymphoid population of cells in between we have a tangible body macrophages that gives a starry sky appearance for the Burkitt's lymphoma ALL is that one and AML is the one which we have classified into eight categories FAB classification which is accepted even by WHO what is the problem is you have to remember the alternate names also so remember the alternate names so M0 we call it as minimally differentiated AML M1 is AML without maturation M2 is the one with maturation that means they will show good number of promyelocytes and even metamyelocytes M3 is the one where you see very very good number of promyelocytes in fact along with the myeloblast you will see predominantly promyelocytes so we call it as acute promyelocytic leukemia this is the one which is very very favorite for exams so I will discuss mainly on acute promyelocytic leukemia M4 you have to remember it as acute myelomonocytic leukemia whereas M5 is the acute monocytic leukemia remember it is myeloblast only but the cells will appear monocytoid monocytoid appearing cells will be there plenty so they are AML M5 M6 is very peculiar type where you see equal proportion of myeloblast as well as the erythroblast so it is erythroleukemia 50% will be myeloblast 50% will be the erythroblast M7 is the rarest among the AML it is so called as acute megakaryocytic leukemia so megakaryocytes are seen only in the bone marrow so when these megakaryocytes very much abnormal appearing megakaryocytes comes into the blood circulation the rarest type of leukemia you will encounter is the acute megakaryocytic leukemia so these patients AML patients primarily it affects the younger age population adults infants even less than one year and 50 to 20 percent of all leukemias are AML so AML is very very common leukemia ALL is peak incidence is 4 years acute lymphoblastic leukemia 4 to 10 years 4 years 4th year is the peak age whereas the AML can have a 2 peaks one at the infants one at the adult age population but very very less after the 50 years of age again patient can have very much abrupt uh, onset of symptoms within few weeks to few months patient can end up uh, life so mortality rate is very very high for these uh, uh, leukemias uh, as I told in general uh, signs and symptoms of leukemias patient will have a pallor the patient will have a fatigue weakness they are very much prone for uh, infections and pneumonias they will develop they can even come with the uh, meningitis bleeding is mainly due to the thrombocytopenia so patient can finish manifest with the bruising and even hepatitial hemorrhages uh, extra medullary hematopoiesis or myeloma, the lymphoma can infiltrate, leukemia can infiltrate and it can cause splenomegaly and hepatomegaly and even lymphadenopathy. So, bony tenderness will be there along with that, organomegaly will be there. Uh, splenomegaly and hepatomegaly, out of which splenomegaly is most important for acute myeloblastic leukemias and acute chronic myeloblastic uh, myelogenous leukemias, whereas lymphadenopathy is very important for the acute lymphoblastic leukemia and even for CLL chronic lymphocytic uh, leukemias 
so myeloid series population will present with the more of a splenomegaly and less of a hepatomegaly rarely as a lymphadenopathy whereas lymphoid population of uh, leukemias and lymphomas will mainly present with the lymphadenopathy rarely as a splenomegaly and hepatomegaly remember one of the point they will commonly ask in the mcq is the aml m3 the m3 is also called as acute uh, promyelocytic leukemia that will have a promyelocytes which will contain plenty of granules the cytoplasmic granules at any time these granules can rupture and they will have a procoagulant activity so that's why patient with the aml m3 can present with the disseminated intravascular coagulation so patient can have thrombosis hemorrhage so it can even lead to the organ failures so remember dic is very commonly seen in aml m3 acute promyelocytic leukemia whereas skin infiltration soft tissue presentation is very common with a m4 and m5 type especially m5 type will present with the gum masses and this soft tissue presentation of the leukemias we call it as chloromas what is chloroma it is a soft tissue mass of the acute leukemias especially myeloid leukemias we call them as chloromas so how to diagnose aml we need a high index of clinical suspicion thoroughly you have to examine the patient especially for the hepatomegaly splenomegaly then family history you have to take past history of any exposure to the radiation you have to take exposure to any chemical substances like benzidine or benzene you have to take into account or various other chemicals drug history you have to take sometimes the aml are therapy related drug related they are the one which will carry very bad prognosis the most and simple investigation is the detailed peripheral smear examination by pathologist that's someone which will give a clue so sometimes we may even need to do bone marrow examinations then to confirm the diagnosis we may need to do cytochemistry and immunophenotyping and the cytogenetics other laboratory test you sometimes you will help you is the serum uric acid level so what will happen for uric acid levels it will be raised because the leukemias will have high cell turnover rate so patient can have a uric acid more levels of uric acid sometimes even complications of uh, this uremia like patient can even have a uh, stones in the urinary tract ldh levels will be raised renal function test you have to do serum calcium and even electro electrolytes you have to estimate so remember what are the findings in the peripheral smear in a patient with a aml rbc is will show normocytic normochromic but anemia will be there wbc count is the one which is markedly increased in number rarely we call it as uh, uh, you know uh, leukemias with the normal count or even sometimes with a uh, aplastic anemia like symptoms and signs so rarely it, it will happen that count will be normal in range but it will show blast so this is quite rare early chemic uh, uh, we call it as early chemic leukemia so we, there will not be much a high count wbc count will be normal so it is rarely it rarely ha happens most of the time acute leukemias will very, have very high count 1 lakh 1.5 lakhs 2 lakhs what is the most important is the majority of the cells are blast and you should see more than 20% myeloblast to call it as aml the mature neutrophils will be very very less so this neutropenia that's the one which makes the patient too susceptible for infections so morphologically you have to classify again the pathologist will classify is it m0 without differentiation or with differentiation with maturation so m1 m2 m3 so like that we will classify based on the morphological appearance of these blast thrombocytopenia will be there in most of the leukemias except the cml most of the leukemias will have a thrombocytopenia so have a look at this classical uh, picture about the aml so have the lympho uh, sorry myeloblast so myeloblast will have a uh, around 2 to 3 prominent nucleoli so this pale stained area is a nucleoli and the granules will be there what is that uh, yes you got it it is a myeloblast containing the r rod so once r rod is seen we are definite that it is a myeloblast only there is no need to worry about it so whenever you see myeloblast we will be more happy to call it as myeloblast bone marrow examination shows the hypercellular marrow and blast blast will be again more than 20% so remember blast percentage is more than 20% is required in both peripheral smear examination as well as in the bone bone marrow examination 
Blast will show intracytoplasmic rods, what we call R rods, is the diagnostic of myeloblast. Increased ME ratio, myeloid series will be much more increased. So, less of MAC erosides will be seen. Patient will have even peripheral uh, thrombocytopenia. So, cytogenetic analysis will be of much more help to confirm the cases of AML. So, balanced translocation is the one which you need to remember. Which translocation is seen in AML M3? So, they can ask as a MCQ. So, it is translocation 15 to 17. AML M2 will have a peculiar 8 to 21 translocation. Inversion 16 will be there for AML M4. So, at least uh, try to remember these three uh, cytogenetic abnormalities in the AML. So, let us have a look on AML M3 because this is the one which is very, very commonly asked. So, numerous cytoplasm, cytoplasmic gran uh, granules will be there in these uh, promyelocytes. So, we have two types, hypogranular and hypergranular acute promyelocytic leukemia. Hypergranular is the one which contains plenty of R rods and it is known for complication that is DIC. So, hypergranular type of AML M3 is known for DIC. Around 5 to 8 percent of AML they occurs in the middle aged adults. Hypogranular variant of acute promyelocytic leukemia is associated with a very high WBC count and increased doubling time. So, morphologically it belongs to FAB classification AML M3 again. So, you have to do special immunochemistry stains like myeloperoxidase. Strongly it will be positive. Non-specific enolase which is very uh, <coughs> non-specific yeast rays very commonly used for the AML M4 and M5 that will be weakly positive in 25% of the cases. CD33 will be positive, homogeneous and heterogeneous CD13 will be positive. So, what is the most important is you have to remember again translocation 15 to 17 translocation will be present. Most important again from clinical point of view is it is treatable by one of the drug that is ATRA what we call it as all trans retinoic acid. So, that is a drug of choice for treating uh, AMLM3 and this drug will be uh, the one which is said to be curative in most of the cases. So, remember some of the cytochemistry stains. So, non specific esterase for the monocytic series, AML M4, M5 will be positive for the non specific esterase, whereas uh, PAS is the one which is specific for the lymphoblast. Lymphoblast will show positivity, block positivity for PAS, whereas PAS will be negative for the myeloblast. What are the stains of choice for the myeloid series? Myelo myeloblast, it is the Sudan black. More commonly, we do the Myeloperoxidase stain, NPO stain, myeloperoxidase stain is very specific for the uh, neutrophilic series, mainly for the myeloblast. So, it is a quite complex topic. Initially, you may not be able to digest the entire thing about leukemias, but as you keep on reading, you will come to know that acute leukemias are the one which will have very aggressive course. Remember, acute leukemias will not go for chronic leukemias. As we have learnt in the inflammation chapter, acute inflammation if not treated it can go for chronic inflammation but here acute leukemias will not go for chronic, acute leukemias will end up, they will have very high mortality whereas chronic leukemias can turn into acute leukemias like CML can turn into AML. So, we call it as blast crisis of CML is nothing but AML. So, chronic leukemias can turn into AML, AML will turn into death. So, they will have very high mortality rate. That's about acute leukemias.